The Fullmetal Alchemist manga and anime series feature an extensive cast of fictional characters created by Hiramu Arakawa. The story is set in a fictional universe within the 20th century in which alchemy is one of the most advanced scientific techniques. Although they basically start the same, the first anime, midway through its run, begins to differ greatly from the original manga. Characters that are killed early on in the manga survive to the end of the first anime and vice versa. The second anime's Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood events, however, faithfully follow those from the manga. The story follows the adventures of two alchemist brothers named Edward and Alphonse Elric. While trying to revive their mother, the brothers lost parts of their bodies, with Alphonse's soul being contained in a suit of armor, and Edward replacing his right arm and left leg with two sets of automail, a type of advanced prosthetic limb. Advised by Roy Mustang, an alchemist from the state military, Edward becomes a state alchemist, and starts traveling with Alphonse through the country of Amestris in order to find a way to recover their bodies. In their search, they hear of the Philosopher's Stone, a powerful alchemy artifact that the brothers can use to recover their bodies. When creating the series, Arakawa took her inspiration from several experiences in her childhood, including her parents' jobs and the manga she used to read. Several types of merchandising have also been released based on the characters from the series. Reviewers from manga, anime, and other media have also commented on the characters. Most of them have praised their development in the story as well as Arakawa's artwork. Topic: <laughs> Creation and Conception. The author Hiramu Arakawa integrated several social problems into the story after talking to people who had suffered and lived through them, such as refugees, war veterans and former Yakuza, or simply by watching news concerning those issues. Several plot elements expand on these themes, such as Panako Rockbell caring for the Elric brothers after the death of their mother, and the brothers helping people all over the country to gain an understanding of the meaning of family. Many characters of the series differ from the manga to the first anime, the homunculi being the most notable, which was because Arakawa wanted the first anime to have a different ending from the manga. To avoid repeating the same events in both series, Arakawa said that she became attracted by the idea of using alchemy in the manga after reading about the Philosopher's Stone. She liked it so much that she started reading books of alchemy, which she found very complicated because some books contradicted others. In the making of the characters' designs, Arakawa has commented that the manga authors Suiho Tagawa and Hiroyuki Eto are her main inspirations, and she also mentions her artwork is a mix of both of them. When drawing the series characters, Alex Lewis Armstrong and the little animals are the easiest for her to draw. Due to the fact she likes dogs, Arakawa added several of them in the story. She also adds various muscles to most of the characters fearing that otherwise they may look much too thin to the point they could look unhealthy. Despite being requested several times by fans to show the characters' birthdates, Arakawa has claimed that she never thought of them. Volume 12, Omake, in the two animated adaptations of the Full Metal Alchemist manga, the characters have been voiced by famous voice actors such as Romy Park and Rai Kujimaya, who portray Edward and Alphonse, respectively, in Japanese. 
In the second adaptation, most of the Japanese voice actors were replaced with the exception of a few, including Park and Kujimaya who reprised their roles. On the other hand, most of the English voice actors from the first anime reprised their roles for Brotherhood with the exception of a few such as Aaron Dismuke Alphonse and Damien Clark Scar who are replaced by Maxie Whitehead and J. Michael Tatum, respectively. Topic. Protagonists. The Elric brothers, Aroraku Shang di Aroraku Kyodai, Edward and Alphonse, are the series' main protagonists. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Elric Edward. Ed. Elric, Edoadu Aroraku Edowado Aroraku, the Full Metal Alchemist. Gang no Lianjin Shushi Hagain no Renkenjutsushi, is the youngest state alchemist in history, joining the program at the age of 12. He and his younger brother, Alphonse, scour the world in search of the philosopher's stone, Shianje no Shi Kenja no Ishi, in the hopes of restoring their bodies. Edward lost his left leg in a futile attempt to revive his mother, Trisha, using alchemy, and lost his right arm in exchange for attaching Alphonse's soul to a suit of armor. Edward now employs the use of metal prosthetics, known as automail, jishiekai otomiru otomiru, as replacement limbs. However, as attempting to resurrect a human opens a portal called the Gate of Truth Genli no Fei Shinri no Tabira, to allow the committer, S to see the truth Genli Shinri, Edward gained great knowledge of the universe as well as the powerful ability to perform transmutations without transmutation circles. Edward is smart, brave and even bold, but also has a prideful tendency to be harsh and arrogant. He harbors a sharp sensitivity to his short height. A recurring gag in both manga and the anime series is for Edward to overly react to people who call him short. CH2 Romy Park and Vic Mignogna voice him in the Japanese and English versions, respectively, EP.1 EP.1 in the live-action film adaptation, he is portrayed by Ryosuke Yamada. <laughs> Alphonse Elric Alphonse. Al. Elric, Arufansu Aroraku Arufansu Aroraku is Edward's younger brother. Together, both of them scour the country in search of the Philosopher's Stone in the hopes of restoring their bodies. Unlike Ed, who lost one of his legs in the failed attempt to revive the brother's mother, all lost his entire body. At the last moment, and at the cost of one of his arms, Ed sealed Al's soul in a large suit of armor, making Al almost invulnerable. Ch. 2. Rai Kujimaya voices him in the Japanese series, Aaron Dismuke in the first English series, EP.1 EP.1 and Maxi Whitehead in the second English series. Topic. Antagonists Topic. Homunculi 
homunculi, homunculusu, homunculusu, are artificial humans that serve as the primary antagonistic force in Fullmetal Alchemist who were created by the homunculus father by extracting what he believed to be his natural flaws into fragments of his philosopher's stone, ch. 97, ch. 53 being personifications of father's darkest aspects, each named after one of the seven deadly sins and identified through an Ouroboros tattoo located somewhere on their bodies, homunculi possess physical prowess with the long life and nigh indestructibility provided by their stones playing in their arrogance while seeing themselves as superior to humans. But the only means of permanently killing a homunculus is dwindling their stone until they are unable to revive themselves once killed. Ch. 39. While the majority of homunculi are placed into artificial bodies created from his flesh, father have also implanted two of his children into human bodies as were the case with King Bradley and the Second Greed. In the first anime, homunculi are the result of an alchemist's failed attempt of resurrecting a person via human transmutation. The resulting misshaped creatures are later exposed to incomplete philosopher's stones that enable them to closely resemble the deceased humans they were intended to be. These homunculi are led by Dante, and feed on incomplete philosopher's stones to fuel their powers, they are susceptible to death once enough of the stones are regurgitated. The homunculi of the first anime possess an additional weakness, a remnant of their original bodies a bone, hair, etc., which weaken and immobilize them when they come in contact with them, e.p. 34 Topic Father Father Ofu Yang Oto Sama is the creator of other homunculi and the series central antagonist CH31 He was originally known as the dwarf in the flask Furusuko no Zhang no Shao Ren Furusuko no Naka no Kobito or Homunculus Homunculusu Homunculusu, a shadowy, charismatic creature created eight centuries ago in the country of C. Selkses, Kusurukusesu Kusurukusesu, Xerxes. In the English anime, under the commission of its king to obtain infinite knowledge, ch. 74. Unable to survive outside his flask, Homunculus formed an attachment to the young slave boy whose blood had been used in his creation, naming the lad Van Hohenheim while helping him rise in C. Selksesian society. But Homunculus grew envious of the human race over their mutual emotional support for each other while being the only one of his kind, losing sight of his own gifts and talents while playing on the vain king's desire for immortality. He tricks the king into creating a country-wide transmutation circle for the creation of a philosopher's stone, whose necessary ingredient is the souls of several living human beings. Once activated, Homunculus ensured that he and the unaware Hohenheim were in the center to absorb the souls of the C. Selksesian population between them. During the process, Homunculus used Hohenheim's blood within him to create a humanoid husk body to serve as his mobile vessel before parting ways. Ch. 75 After searching for the nearest area closest to the center of the world, the now prideful and greedy Homunculus established a mistress under the title of the Eastern Sage 
and taught alchemy to its people for the sake of his master plan, engineering every war in the country's history to bring it into the form of a perfect circle with sites of bloody carnage at all the cardinal points the necessary configuration for the transmutation of another philosopher's stone and repeat his actions in C. Selkses on a higher scale to open the gate and become a perfect being with absolute freedom. Father then attempted to purge out his cardinal sins as a means to elevate himself, creating his homunculi offspring to gain a family. Father then uses his homunculi to gather sacrifices. Alchemists of notable skill who attempted human transmutation and survived and gained knowledge of the truth. These sacrifices are necessary for Father's plan to work. Ch. 100. As an additional precaution against alchemists, Father stationed himself underground above the tectonic plates so that he can negate any form of alchemy that derives its power from tectonic energy. Ch. 54 Having left the eyes of the Amestrian public, referred as the good gentleman. By his human subordinates, Father keeps in touch with the country's highest ranking human officials to maintain the country's growth under his absolute authority and control. Eventually, Father's plans come to fruition on the promised day. Yushu no ri yakusoku no hai as the nationwide transmutation circle can only be activated during a solar eclipse the sun symbolizes a man, and the moon symbolizes a woman, with an eclipse representing a perfect being. Father manages to restrain his sacrifices and so he can gather enough souls into his body from a mistress's people to absorb the trans-dimensional entity beyond the gate which he called God, Shen Kami. From there, Father creates a new youthful body with his powers increased to the point of defying natural order. But Hohenheim's transmutation circle restored the Amestrian souls to their bodies with Father starting to lose control over the entity within him, ch. 104-107. Furthermore, with Scar removing his ability to block the Amestrian's alchemy, Father is weakened when attacked by all sides. After Edward manages to pierce Father's chest to free the remaining trapped souls that consisted his dwindled philosopher's stone, God proceeds to turn Father inside out and drags him before the gate. As he is taken away, Father laments the harshness of reality, crying out that he does not understand why reality denies him getting his greatest desires and true freedom being so impossible to achieve. At his personal gate of truth and reduced to his original form, Father is confronted by truth, who poetically punishes Father by letting the gate drag him back into it where he was presumably created from, thus letting Father stand in God's place in some senses whilst stripping Father completely of the freedom he cherished. Ch. 108. He is voiced by Imasa Kayumi in Japanese and by Kent Williams in English. Carr Liminger notes that while the entirety of FMA, B could be called epic, Father's plan, to consume God, is of such scale and its result so mind-bogglingly spectacular that it can't be called anything else. IGN ranked him as the tenth best anime villain of all time, saying that he makes for a kind of weird analogy with the Greek god Uranus where he's the father of the lesser powers who generally try to control humanity for their own goals and pleasures." They also praise the sheer scale of his villainy. 
Over the course of centuries, he regularly annihilates cities and even countries to gain more power. He's got the blood of millions on his hands, and this doesn't bother him in the slightest. He is the quintessential villain who seeks power just for the sake of having power, and his complete indifference to humanity makes him a true monster. Rob Bricken, in his list of top 11 most evil anime villains of all time, he ranks Father as number 2, saying that his deed of sacrificing a whole country to simply absorb the power of God is a feat as arrogant as it is evil, and that he's more than willing to kill his own children, the homunculi, in order to achieve his ends. Topic. Pride Pride, Puredo Puredo the arrogant is the first of Father's homunculi to be created, resembling Father's true form as he appears as an amorphous shadow with multiple eyes, ch. 78. He orders his younger siblings to perform their respective tasks. Pride can destroy or manipulate anything that his shadow comes into contact with, see anything through his shadow, possess the bodies of others by repressing their connections to their respective souls, and gain the physical traits of whomever he eats, such as gluttony's appetite and sense of smell, ch. 87. The presence of his unleashed form gives off an intense, dreadful pressure. His identity is a mystery until the later half of the series, when he is revealed to be taking a host body in Selim Bradley, Serimu Buradore Serimu Buradore, the adoptive son of King Bradley, ch. 70. Pride can only exist within a given area, the area surrounding his host body and the underground transmutation circle running throughout a mistress, which he is tasked to guard. He needs a light source in order to be able to cast, and subsequently use, his shadow, and it can similarly be killed if the light becomes too bright. Ch. 88 Hubristic and boastful, he bears disdain for the human race, enjoys shaming and mocking others, and acts in a guiltless, abhorrent and self-seeking way towards virtually everyone, including most of his fellow homunculi. He gets angered by any defiance coming from his younger siblings. He thinks in a very biased manner, using excuses to provide justifications for his cruelty. Despite these baleful traits, he has some attachment to his adoptive human mother. The Elric brothers and their allies battle pride several times, beginning on the eve of the promised day. Edward destroys Pride's body in battle, reducing him to his true form, a minuscule, fetus-like creature, ch. 106. After the battle with Father ends, the now powerless Pride is brought to his adoptive mother and raised all over again. Two years later, Selim is shown to have grown into a much more compassionate young child. Ch. 108 In the first anime adaptation, Pride represents the true identity of King Bradley, while Selim is a normal human child who briefly appears at the end of the series, arriving at the fight between Bradley and Roy Mustang with the homunculus original human skull. Bradley is weakened by its presence, strangling Selim to death before he subsequently dies at the hands of Mustang's flames. In the first anime, Makoto Samura voices Selim in the Japanese version, and Zara Little in the English dub, EP.51 His voice in the second series is provided by Yuko Sanpei in Japanese, and by Brittany Kerbovsky in English. <laughs> 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 
Topic NV Envy, envui envy, the jealous, is a shape-shifting homunculus of unknown sex whose preferred form is that of an androgynous youth. While envy can assume their actual form of an enormous leviathan creature, their body pulsing the faces of the sea selkses citizens who constitute their stone, envy's true form is revealed to a tiny parasitic creature once enough of their stone is heavily dwindled, ch. 53 ch. 79 Envy serves as an infiltrator for the other homunculi, often assuming another's identity to gain sensitive intel or for manipulation purposes. Ch. 6. Envy is also a sadist who enjoys inflicting pain on humans, having caused the Ishbalan civil war by impersonating a soldier to murder an Ishbalan child. Ch. 51 First seen impersonating Father Cornello and burning down the Fifth Laboratory, Envy personally murdered Mays Hughes while framing Maria Ross for the crime. But, after Mustang kills Lust, Envy takes over as the homunculi's liaison while recruiting Kimbla to capture Dr. Marco. However, Envy is lured into a trap with their stone nearly destroyed by Marco and being forced into their true form while being handed over to Mei Chong in a glass jar for her to take back to Shane. Later, Envy plays on May's compassion to trick her into taking them to Central so they can reconstitute their body, doing so by absorbing several of the mannequin soldiers for their philosopher's stones. Ch. 80. Soon after, Mustang confronts Envy and, upon the homunculus confessing to being Hugh's murderer, incinerates enough of the homunculus to force them back to their powerless state. Envy is then spared Mustang's revenge-driven wrath when Edward, Scar and Riza convince him not to kill the creature. Ch. 94. When Envy makes an attempt to implode their captors' alliance by reminding them all of their past actions against each other, they snapped when Edward realizes Envy is jealous of humans being able to persevere through tragedy. This forces an upset Envy to commit suicide by tearing out their philosopher's stone core and crushing it rather than live with the knowledge that a lowly human understood their personal plight ch 95 in the first anime adaptation portrayed as fully male envy was the first homunculus created in the story from the body of van honenheim's son with dante long ago ep.50 this influenced envy to serve as dante's right hand while expressing a personal vendetta against the elric brothers for receiving the fatherly love he never had that vendetta intensified when Envy learned that Dante disposed of Honenheim in his absence while refusing to let the Elric brothers keep the Philosopher's Stone. Envy succeeds in fatally wounding Edward in the finale, but is dragged with him to the Gate of Truth when Alphonse uses the stone to sacrifice himself to save his brother's life. When Envy learns that Hohenheim is still alive and on the opposite side of the gate, the homunculus forces his way through and permanently ends up in the form of a giant serpentine dragon upon reaching Earth. It was revealed in Fullmetal Alchemist the movie, Conqueror of Shambhala that Envy has been captured by the Thule Society for their own agenda of invading Amatris while finally killing Honenheim. Envy is destroyed when used by the Society to create a gateway linking the two realities.
Envy is voiced by Mayumi Yamaguchi in the first Japanese series, and by Minami Takayama in the second. EP.22 EP.8 Envy's voice in the English adaptations is provided by Wendy Powell. EP.22 EP.8 In the live action film adaptation, Envy is portrayed by Kanata Hongo. Topic. Wrath Wrath, Rasu Risu, the Furious, is the true identity of King Bradley, Kingu Buradore Kingu Buradore, the leader of Amestris's state military and the leader of Amestris, having the title of President, Da Zongtong Daisoto, ch. 29. While portraying himself as a kind ruler, Bradley ultimately reveals himself to be a hateful cynic with an atheistic view of religion as a means to enforce order on the fearful masses. While a proficient swordsman, Bradley augments his deadly swordsmanship with the ultimate eye. Zuichang no Yan Saikyo no Mi, a clairvoyant eye that bears the Ouroboros seal, which is usually covered by an eye patch. The eye enables him to predict his opponent's next move to counter along with seeing things the normal human eye can not like air currents. Ch. 29 Bradley is voiced by Hidekatsu Shibata in the Japanese versions, and by Ed Blaylock in English dubs, EP.6 EP.6 being the last homunculus to be created by father at the time of the story's beginning, Bradley was originally a human who was raised trained along with other children to become a mistress's ideal leader. When he and the others were subjected to father's philosopher's stone being directly injected into their blood system, only Bradley survived despite having dwindled the infused stone down to one soul as a result of his transition into a homunculus though he admitted of not knowing if he retained his original human soul from the ordeal. This resulted with Bradley aging like a human, a trait that irritates him because his ailing body cannot keep up with the speed of his eye's predictions. Ch. 53. Because homunculi cannot reproduce, Bradley was given a family to keep up appearances, his son, Selim Bradley, and a wife he personally chose. Ch. 80. After receiving various wounds while fighting against father's resistance, Bradley fights Scar but is mortally wounded in battle. Upon his death, Bradley concludes that he had a good life despite being a homunculus. Ch. 105 In the first anime adaptation, Bradley is pride while an original homunculus is introduced to serve the story's version of Wrath. Wrath is the result of Azumi's attempt to revive her infant child. Her effort failed and she sent the infant's body beyond the gate of truth out of shame. There, the child, Wrath, grew up. When Ed later lost his arm and leg while trying to revive his mother, Wrath took both for himself, which allowed him to use alchemy and escape to a mistress. EP.31 Because of his ability to perform alchemy, Wrath can assimilate any sort of material or object into his body. He takes the side of the Elrics after Dante removes his limbs to keep him quiet after Wrath attempted to revive Sloth himself. He is later given automail replacements by Winry. EP.51 He appears again in Conqueror of Shambhala, in which he battles against Gluttony so that Al can use them both as sacrifices to open the Gate of Truth. 
Al does so and is able to reunite with Ed, while Wrath is able to reunite with the spirit of Izumi. In the first anime, Wrath is voiced by Nana Mizuki in the Japanese series, EP.28, and by Lucy Christian in the English dub, EP. 28. Topic. Sloth Sloth, Sarusu Sarosu, the indolent, is a large, muscular, dim-witted man who believes everything to be pointless and tiresome. Despite his lazy nature, he is very strong physically, and is the fastest of the homunculi, ch. 92. He typically chooses to be indifferent, and is extremely reluctant to care about anyone or anything. He is tasked with digging a gigantic transmutation circle beneath a mistress to be used in turning the country into a philosopher's stone. Though he is briefly impeded in this job when he runs into the Elric brothers at Briggs Fortress, he is allowed to continue his work. After finishing the circle, ch. 78 Sloth serves as father's bodyguard and fights off Mustang and Olivier's troops when they invade Central, ch. 92. He is eventually killed through the combined efforts of the Armstrong siblings and Izumi and Sig Curtis. Unlike the other homunculi, Sloth accepted death with a smile as Living was too much. Ch. 96. He is voiced by Fumahika Tachiki in Japanese and Patrick Seitz in English. EP.34 In the first anime adaptation, Sloth is the product of the Elric brothers' attempt to revive their mother, Trisha Elric, found by Dante and fed incomplete philosopher's stones until she assumes her original form's likeness. She is given the alias. Juliet Douglas, Gerietto de Garasu, Gerietto de Garasu, and appointed as King Bradley's personal secretary, allowing her to serve as the homunculi's direct contact within the state military. She has a peevish personality, and is able to transform her body into a watery composition, which she uses to drown others by grabbing hold of them. EP.42 During her final battle with the Elric brothers, Wrath, having merged with Trisha's remains earlier, merges with Sloth's body so that he would never have to be separated from her. This leaves Sloth paralyzed, allowing Edward Elric to defeat her. Yoshino Takamori as her Japanese voice actress, and Lydia McKay her English voice actress, EP.3 EP. 3 Greed <inaudible> 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 Greed, Guridu Gurido, the avaricious, the ultimate shield. Zuichang no Dun Saikyo no Tate, is a rogue homunculus who craves money, women, and other worldly possessions above all else. Because of this, he betrays the homunculi, as working to feed father's greed would deprive greed of his own greedy desires. He has the ability to rearrange the carbon atoms that coats his entire body in diamond hard body armor. Greed is introduced when he sends some of his Chimera subordinates to capture Alphonse Elric so he can obtain the secret of immortality from him and Edward. Ch.27 The state military soon raids their location to rescue Al, where King Bradley repeatedly kills Greed to finally subdue him, taking him back to father. Ch. 30. Unwilling to rejoin them, Greed is melted down to his philosopher's stone and is consumed by father. Ch. 31. Later, Ling Yao, in his search for immortality, offers to become the new Greed. 
Greed is given complete control of Ling's body after Ling willingly relinquishes control, believing this to be the only way to gain immortality. Ch. 56. Though this greed initially has no recollections of his actions as the former greed, Beto's death brings back the memories of all his loyal subordinates. Ch. 82. Angry with Bradley for killing his possessions, and further provoked by Ling, the new greed defects from the homunculi once more, eventually joining forces with Edward Elric during their fight against Father, intending to take Father's powers and use them for world domination. Ch. 83. However, during the final battle, Greed comes to a realization his true desire is friendship, ch. 107. To that end, Greed sacrifices himself to aid Edward by transferring himself from Ling's body into a weakened father, using his abilities to render father's shell extremely fragile before being extinguished. Ch. 108 In the first anime adaptation, Greed escapes the raid and flees to Dante's mansion. Dante, who had created Greed when attempting to revive her dead lover, still retains the bones from his original body, which leaves him severely weakened. Edward kills Greed soon after he is made to believe that Greed killed Dante, though not before leaving with the valuable knowledge of how to kill the homunculi. EP.34 He is voiced by Junichi Sawabe in Japanese, and Chris Patton in English. EP.33 EP.33 For the second series, his voice is provided by Yuichi Nakamura in Japanese. EP. P.13 In English, Patton reprises his role for the first Greed, while the second Greed is voiced by Troy Baker. <laughs> Gluttony Gluttony, Garato or Garatoni, the voracious, possessing powerful jaws and acidic salvia, is an obese, simple minded homunculus whose thoughts rarely stray far from eating anything. He particularly likes eating people, and the only way he can find enjoyment in a battle is if he can eat his opponent afterward. Ch. 2. During most of the story, Gluttony typically appears in the company of Lust whom he has an attachment to. After learning of Lust's death, Gluttony becomes deeply depressed while becoming more dangerous. Gluttony is the failed product of Father's attempts to create a gate of truth. When activating this imperfect portal, Gluttony's stomach opens up, revealing a bestial counter version of the Eye of Providence at its center. His ribs spread out to act as a border for the gate and double as large extensible teeth that can consume everything in his corrupt eye's field of vision in an instant. Ch. 49. Anything gluttony consumes is transported to a stagnant, hellish dimension, which is filled with an endless repugnant sea of blood, and is littered with victims and artifacts from centuries before the start of the series. Ch. 51. In the ensuing battles after Lust's death, the energy in Gluttony's Philosopher's Stone is exhausted to the point of nearly dying. Ch. 56 Father later restores Gluttony and sends him with pride to capture the Elrics. Gluttony is repeatedly killed by Greed and Lan Fan, which causes Pride devour Gluttony in order to gain his abilities while replenishing his own Philosopher's Stone. Ch. 86 Ch. 87 The first anime adaptation instead explains Gluttony's origins as a way to produce imperfect Philosopher's Stones from the souls of the people he eats. 
When gluttony fell into a depression after Lust's death, he is transformed by Dante into a mindless eating machine. This act ultimately backfires when Gluttony eats Dante, with the homunculus remaining under Central City before being ultimately destroyed by Wrath using him as payment along with himself to open the gate. EP.51 Yasuhiro Takato voices him in the first Japanese series, and Tetsu Shiratori in the second. EP.22 EP.3 Chris Kassin as his English voice actor, EP.22 EP.3 Shinji Uchiyama portrays him in the live-action film adaptation. <laughs> Lust Lust, Risuto Risuto, the lascivious, the ultimate spear. Zuichang no Mao Saikyo no Hoko, ch. 31, appears as a shapely woman who acts as an envoy for her leader in both iterations, and encourages humans down her desired path. She also serves as the homunculi's primary assassin, killing those who discover their plans, and also those who had served as the homunculi's allies but are considered disposable. She can extend her fingers to great lengths, and these fingers are capable of cutting through most substances on Earth. Ch. 2. After leading an effort to capture Barry the Chopper, her plans backfire when Roy Mustang infiltrates the homunculi's secret lair. Ch. 38 Mustang repeatedly blasts Lust with flames, ultimately killing her after depleting the power of her Philosopher's Stone. Ch. 39 In the first anime adaptation, Lust was created when Scar's brother tried to revive his deceased lover, EP.40 Though originally largely the same as her manga counterpart, Lust begins to develop a strong desire to regain her humanity as the series progresses. This ultimately leads to her defection from the homunculi and aiding Edward on the condition he helps her become human. Lust ends up being killed by Wrath after he paralyzed her using a locket filled with the hair from her original form, accepting her fate while speculating that she might have driven by existential curiosity. EP.47 In Japanese, she is voiced by Yuko Sato in the first series and by Kakuko Inoue in the second. EP.1 EP.3 She is voiced by Laura Bailey in English. In the live-action film adaptation, she is portrayed by Yasuko Matsuyuki. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Father Cornello. Cornello, Co Nero Canero is a charlatan who founded the Church of Leto in Lior, using an imitation philosopher's stone provided to him by lust to present himself as a holy man so he can ultimately use his legion of followers to take over the country. But when the Elric brothers arrived to Riol, they exposed Cornello's deception to the public before he suffered an infliction to his hand from an alchemical rebound caused by exhausting his stone. Cornello pleads with Lust to save him from the angry mob, only to be killed as he served his purpose with his corpse eaten by gluttony while Envy assumed his identity to complete their plans for the town as a node of the nationwide transmutation circle. Cornello is voiced by Kinryu Arimoto in the first Japanese series and Seizo Kato in the second anime series, Andy Mullins voicing Cornello in both English versions, EP.1 EP.3 Cornello is portrayed by Kenjiro Ishimaru in the live-action film adaptation. Topic. 
Show Tucker Major Show Tucker, Show Taka, Show Taka, the Sewing Life Alchemist. Zui Ming no Lianjin Shushi Teime no Renkenjutsushi, is a bio alchemist who excels in the creation of chimeras and became a state alchemist by creating a talking chimera which starved itself to death shortly after its creation. After meeting Tucker, the Elric brothers discover that the talking chimera was actually his wife fused with another animal as they discover it after Tucker fused his daughter, Nina, with his pet dog, Alexander, in order to maintain his position as state alchemist. Tucker expresses remorselessness for his actions while justifying them from a scientific point of view and leaving a mortified Edward with a painful lesson. After being under house arrest for his actions, Tucker is killed by Scar, ch. 5 in the first anime adaptation, after being arrested and labeled legally dead when reported to have been secretly executed by the state, Tucker is reassigned to perform classified research in creating chimeras within the clandestine Fifth Laboratory. Tucker eventually becomes a chimera while experimenting to revive his daughter, gaining the appearance of a man crucified upon the back of a large dog. Bent on achieving his goals of reviving Nina by any means, Tucker sided with Greed's faction and then Frank Archer before going into hiding. Though Tucker succeeds in recreating Nina's human body using the Philosopher's Stone in Alphonse's body, he loses his remaining sanity when he discovered that the Nina doll was without a soul, EP.48 appearing the live-action film as a major antagonist, Tucker serves as an accomplice to the homunculi prior to being killed by Lust. Tucker is voiced by Makoto Nagai and Chuck Huber in the Japanese and English versions, respectively. EP.3 EP.4 Tucker is portrayed by Yo Oizumi in the live action film adaptation. <laughs> SOLFJ Kimbla Major Solfj Kimbla, Zorufu J Kinbury, Zorufu J E I Kinbury, the Crimson Lotus Alchemist, or Crimson Alchemist, Honglian no Lianjin Shushi Gurin no Renkenjutsushi, is a sociopath with an artistic flair for destruction. He earned fame during the Ishbalan Civil War for his ruthless commitment in the mass slaughter of the Ishbalan people while laying many villages to waste. Using transmutation circles tattooed into the palms of his hands, Kimbla can make a bomb out of anything he comes into contact with after clapping his hands. Kimbla's effectiveness allowed him use of an imperfect philosopher's stone to amplify his alchemical abilities, using it to wipe out Scar's family. But as the war ended, Kimbla killed his commanding officers when they attempt to take back the stone and he was sentenced to prison as a result. Ch. 61. Kimbla is later released by the homunculi to assist in hunting down Scar and retrieving Tim Marco, though the Elric brothers thwarted his attempts. Kimbla is also instructed to investigate a bloody conflict on the Dramanian border to complete the nationwide transmutation circle, feigning himself as a defector to trick the Drachma people into being led to slaughter during a full-scale attack on the fortress of Briggs, ch. 79. Kimbla later frees Pride from the earthen dome that Hohenheim trapped him in, only to be fatally wounded by his former Chimera subordinates in the ensuing and consumed by Pride moments later. Ch. 93. 
but Kimbla's sadistic nature allowed him to maintain his sense of self within Pride Stone, briefly manifesting himself to stop the homunculus from taking over Edward's body. Ch. 106. Despite his crimes against humanity, Kimbla is a gentleman outside of fighting and sees the world in a much more simplistic manner. During the Civil War, he briefly berates a guilt-ridden Mustang for the latter's inability to accept there is no justice on the battlefield while openly asks him why should drown in self-pity when he freely chose to become a state alchemist. His advice inevitably helps shape Mustang's resolve to aim for the top. Ch. 108. In the first anime, Kimbla escapes from prison and joins the homunculus Greed and his Chimera lackeys before betraying them to be re enlisted under Frank Archer. EP.33 He later infiltrates the city of Lior to instigate an uprising against the military. Kimbla encounters Scar while destroying the city, and, after a failed effort to blow the Ishbalan up, he is killed. In his final moments, Kimbla turns Alphonse into a bomb, which prompts Scar to give the boy the Philosopher's Stone. EP.42 Kimbla is voiced by Yuji Ueda in the first Japanese series and Hiroyuki Yoshino in the second series, voiced Eric Vale in the English adaptations. EP.22 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 Topic. Supporting characters Topic. Winry Rockbell Winry Rockbell, Yuenry Rokuburu Winry Rokuburu, a childhood friend of Edward and Alphonse Elric, lives in Rizimbul with her grandmother, Panako Rockbell, who raised her after the death of her parents during the Ishbal War. Ch. 9, 24 Her parents were killed by Scar in a blind rage. Winry is a practicing and gifted automail mechanic, a prodigy following in her grandmother's footsteps, continually designing and maintaining Edward Elric's automail prosthetics. She is well known for working in Rush Valley as a promising engineer with many loyal customers. Winry is often used as an unwitting hostage by the homunculi to ensure the Elric's subservience to the state. Ch. 56 Winry is known for helping the Elric's emotionally and physically, behaving understandingly and compassionately towards them. She and Edward get married in the concluding moments of the manga, as their relationship is built upon communication and reliance. In the first anime, her parents were executed by a younger Roy Mustang under military order. She is voiced by Megumi Toyoguchi and Caitlin Glass in the Japanese and English versions, respectively. EP.3 EP.3 In the second series, she is voiced by Megumi Takamoda in Japanese, EP.2 and Glass reprises her in the English version. In the live-action film adaptation, she is portrayed by Subasa Honda. Topic. Izumi Curtis Izumi Curtis, Izumi Katisu Izumi Katisu, is the alchemy teacher of the Elric brothers. She agreed to train the brothers to hone their alchemical abilities after their mother died. She expands their training with a regimen of philosophy, martial arts, and living off the land, ch. 20. 
Her methods are derived from her own alchemy training. She was forced to survive in the northern region surrounding Briggs Fortress for a month, although it turns out she succeeded by stealing supplies from the northern fortress. She thinks of the Elrics as her own sons, and although she severs her student-teacher ties with them after learning of their attempts with human transmutation and Ed's joining the state military, she continues to do all she can to help them. Ch. 28. She can be quite violent when punishing or sparring with the Elric brothers, so they tend to be deathly afraid of her. Ch. 25. Her claim, I'm a housewife, while confronting greed became one of Arakawa's favorite scenes, she will often casually declare herself as one whenever someone asks who she is. This is due to her distaste of the alchemist profession. Izumi and her husband Sig Curtis Shigukatisu Shigukatisu were expecting a child years before the start of the series, however, their son was stillborn. Izumi tried and failed to revive the child through human transmutation an act that created wrath in the first anime. The failed attempt took some of her reproductive organs, resulting in her inability to ever again be pregnant, and to periodically vomit blood as well as leave her weak, the latter much to others disgust. Izumi could thereafter perform alchemy without a transmutation circle, because in the failed transmutation she saw the truth. Genli Shinri, ch. 44. Izumi attracts the attention of the state military for having survived the failed human transmutation. As she and her husband travel around a mistress in order to avoid the military, they eventually meet Ed and Al's father Van Hohenheim. He rearranges her insides to ease the blood flow, and persuades her to help collaborate in bringing down the state military. Ch. 76, 95. Thereafter, she is never again seen coughing up blood. In the first anime adaptation, she was taught alchemy by Dante. Izumi tries to get close to Wrath in order to repent for the creation of him. She dies between the end of the first anime and Conqueror of Shambhala, but, during the movie, her spirit reunites with Wrath in the afterlife. She is voiced by Shoko Suda in Japanese and Christine Auden in the English dub, EP.26 EP. 26 Topic Van Hohenheim Van Hohenheim Van Hohenheimu Van Hohenheimu is the father of the Elric brothers with a keen knowledge of alchemy processes he left them and his wife Trisha several years before the start of the series ch 68. It is later revealed that Hohenheim is several centuries old. He is voiced in the first series by Masashi Ibarra in Japanese and by Scott McNeil in the English dub, EP.43 EP.43 in the second series. He is voiced by Unsho Ishizuka and Daisuke Namakawa young in Japanese and John Swazi and Aaron Dismuke young in the English dub, EP.19. Originally a slave from the kingdom of C. Selkses under the designation Slave No. 23, Urshi Sanhau Nijusango, Hohenheim was used for an experiment by his master, a well known scientist and alchemist, using his blood to create a shadow like creature known as Homunculus. Ch. 74. In thanks to his birth, Homunculus gave the slave the name Van Hohenheim and taught him how to read, write and perform alchemy. 
As years went on, Hohenheim's status improved and was soon close to the king. When Homunculus taught King C. Selkses how to obtain immortality, he instead gave it to Hohenheim and himself, sacrificing the citizens from C. Selkses. Possessing half of the C. Selkses citizens inside him, Hohenheim escaped in horror and tried communicating with them by the time he entered the land of Xing, ch. 75. Having played a role in Xing's development through Alkahestry, Hohenheim came to a mistress where he met and married Tricia Elric. After discovering that Homunculus, now known as Father, was going to sacrifice the inhabitants from a mistress, Hohenheim left his family to travel around the country to leave shards from his philosopher's stone. Ch. 68. When confronting father, Hohenheim's plan succeed as he uses the shards to nullify father's attempt to transmute the people from a mistress. Ch. 105. However, after father's defeat, Hohenheim dies peacefully in front of Trisha's grave, happy that he was able to meet her and have his sons. Ch. 108 In the first anime, where he is referred to as Hohenheim of Light, Guang no Hohenheimu Hikari no Hohenheimu, Hohenheim has used the power of a philosopher's stone for hundreds of years to switch from body to body, prolonging his life. He was originally Dante's lover, and left her years before the series start. Meeting Tricia, Hohenheim decided to remain in his current body until his death occurred. However, as his body started deteriorating, he left his family. After learning of Dante's actions, Hohenheim confronts her, but is transported through the Gate of Alchemy to a parallel world based on the real world. EP.50 Hohenheim is captured in Conqueror of Shambhala by the Thule Society to be used as a catalyst for the portal to a mistress. Ultimately sacrificing his life to return Edward home, Hohenheim forces himself to be fatally bitten by Envy, a homunculus that was based on his own deceased son with Dante, and also used as a sacrifice to open the gate. Topic. Scar Scar, Shang no Nan Suka Suka, literally, the Scarred Man, is one of the survivors of the Ishbalan extermination campaign, ch. 6, and named for the scar across his face. Depicted as an Ishbalan warrior priest, Scar was a capable fighter who desperately tried to save whomever he could from the onslaught. However, Kimbla's enhanced alchemical attacks were too much. Scar's brother, who had been researching Amestrian alchemy and Xingyi's alkahestry, considered heresy by Ishbalans in an attempt to gain power against the state, gives Scar his right arm in order to save his life. Ch. 61. Scar initially targeted state alchemists for their role in his people's slaughter, even becoming an enemy of the Elrics after he killed Nina Tucker as an act of mercy after she was turned into a chimera, but ultimately sided with them upon learning that the homunculi are his actual enemies. Topic. Tim Marco Tim Marco, Timu Maruko, Timu Maruko, formerly the Crystal Alchemist, Jiajing no Lianjin Shushi Kesho no Renkenjutsushi, was the leading researcher in the military's Philosopher's Stone creation project. 
After sacrificing a number of innocent Ishbalans during the Ishbal civil war in order to create new stones, he fled the military with some imperfect stone samples. He settled down in a small country town where he uses his stones to heal the sick. He is later found by the Elric brothers, and he directs them to some of the research he left behind in Central to help them in their search for the Philosopher's Stone, ch. 8. Marco is then captured by the homunculi who locked him deep below Central before he was found by Scar. Marco saw Scar as a means to an end while telling him of his involvement in the Ishbalan War in the hopes of being killed in vengeance. Scar instead disfigures Marco's face beyond recognition as a disguise, kidnaps him, and forces him to help in bringing down the homunculi. Ch. 62. After father's defeat, Marco offers to restore Mustang's eyesight in return of allowing the surviving Ishbalans to return to their homeland with him placed there as a doctor. Ch. 108 in the first anime and live-action movie, while being held in military custody, Marco is killed by the homunculi in an attempt to silence him. EP.50 Koji Totani voices him in the Japanese series, while Bryce Armstrong voices him in the English dub, EP.14 EP.14 Masayuki Omoro voices him in the second anime, while Jerry Russell voices him in the English dub, EP.6 in live action, is portrayed by Jun Kunimura. Topic. Yoki Yoki, Yoki when first introduced, is a corrupt member of the military who imposes heavy taxes on the town of Uswell, bankrupting its citizens. When the Elric brothers arrive in town, they trick Yoki into giving up ownership of the town and promptly report his actions to the military. Ch. 2. He is stripped of his rank and lives as a homeless person on the outskirts of Central where he ends up working for Scar out of initial fear for his life. Though he tries to convince those they encounter that Scar is his servant, Yoki does as Scar commands and calls him, Master. Since he has started following Scar around the country, Yoki has assumed a role as comic relief, often having pain inflicted upon him when he tries to seem superior to others. Ch. 33. In the first anime, Yoki alerts the military to Scar's location to regain his position and is covertly killed by Lust in the subsequent raid. Kazuki Yao voices him in Japanese, and Barry Yandel in English, EP.9 EP. 9. Topic. Roy Mustang's Squadron Roy Mustang's Squadron are those who serve directly under Mustang's command. Edward is also a member of the squadron. Topic: Roy Mustang. Colonel Roy Mustang, Roy Masutengu, Roy Masutengu, the Flame Alchemist. Yan no Lianjin Shushi Hano no Renkenjutsushi, is a state alchemist and Edward's direct superior. He is promoted to Brigadier General at the end of the series and is a general in the epilogue. He aims towards becoming the next Fuhrer of a Mestress, heavily relying on the support of his loyal subordinates to propel him along that path. Ch. 
5, 61 Mustang would find this path interrupted by the murder of his best friend and confidant, Mays Hughes, afterward, beginning an almost behind-the-scenes investigation into finding the true culprit, ch. 16. Toru Okawa and Travis Willingham voice Mustang in the Japanese and English versions, respectively, EP.3 EP.3 in the second anime series, he is voiced by Shin Ichiro Miki EP.1 with Travis Willingham reprising the role in the dub. In the live-action film adaptation, he is portrayed by Dean Fujioka. Topic. Riza Hakai First Lieutenant Riza Hakai, Riza Hokue Riza Hokuai, is Roy Mustang's most trusted and dearest subordinate. She often carries out many of the tasks he is too lazy to do, acts as his personal assistant, and protects him from danger. Ch. 4. She holds a strong sense of admiration for him, even willing to put her own life at risk. Roy returns this, and occasionally refers to her as, My Queen, his chess code name for her. She also doubles as his voice of reason, keeping cool in heated situations, and scolding him when he allows his emotions to get in the way. Riza and Roy seem to share a close relationship as she identifies him as her most precious person. Ch. 39 Riza specializes in firearms, particularly sniper rifles, and can hit nearly any target with lethal accuracy. Ch. 7 in the series, she adopts a dog named Black Hayate, Barakahayate Barakahayate from Kane Fury that she raises with stern discipline. When Hayate urinates indoors, she fires a number of warning rounds at the wall around the dog to reinforce that doing so is against established protocol. Volume 3, Gaiden, in the form of a tattoo on her back, Riza bears the final notes to her father's work on flame alchemy, and his legacy as an alchemist and Mustang's teacher. After seeing what Mustang was capable of during the Ishbal War with such ability, Riza begs Roy to burn the tattoo, fearing the damage future flame alchemists could cause. Ch. 61 Riza is reassigned as King Bradley's personal assistant to be used as a hostage when Mustang learns the homunculi control the state. Ch. 52. When she discovers that King Bradley's adopted son, Selim, is a homunculus as well, she sends her discovery to Mustang in code as soon as she can. She eventually defects from the military to help Mustang overthrow King Bradley, ch. 74 Arakawa received various questions regarding the future of her relationship with Mustang and commented that, while Hawkeye stays with Mustang, a marriage would still be possible despite military regulations. In the first anime, she is voiced by Machiko Nia in Japanese and by Colleen Klinkenbird in English. EP.5 EP.5 In the second anime, she is voiced by Fumiko Orikasa EP.1 while in the English version, Colleen Klinkenberg came back for the role. In the live-action film, she is portrayed by Misako Renbutsu. Gene <laughs> Havoc Second Lieutenant Jean Havoc, Jan Habaku Jan Habaku, is one of Roy Mustang's most trusted subordinates. His chess code name is the Knight. 
He is usually seen smoking a cigarette, something that Arakawa developed prior to the series' start to help Mustang to create fire to fight homunculus lust. He was recruited by Mustang for his loyalty and general sincerity, as well as his above-average shooting skills. Because working for Mustang requires moving frequently and a complete dedication of time, Havoc has very little free time, and cannot maintain a relationship with a woman for very long, ch. 61. He unknowingly dates Lust, who tries to extract information about Mustang from him, ch. 38. She is unsuccessful, and eventually reveals her true identity to him. In the course of the attempt to kill her, Havoc is severely injured when Lust stabs him through the spinal cord, leaving the lower half of his body completely paralyzed. Ch. 41 Havoc is then encouraged to find another way to help their cause and later provides his support by supplying Mustang with whatever supplies they may need from his family's store, ch. 89. In the second anime, he is healed by Marco's Philosopher's Stone. In the first anime, Yasunori Matsumoto is his Japanese voice actor, and Mike McFarland his English voice actor, EP.13 EP.13 in Brotherhood, he is voiced by Yuji Ueda in Japanese, with Mike McFarland reprising his role in English, EP. 13. Topic. Heyman's Breda Second Lieutenant Heyman's Breda, Heimansu Breda, Heimansu Breda is one of Roy Mustang's most trusted subordinates. His chess code name is The Rook. He was recruited by Mustang for his high level of intelligence, indicated by his talent with chess and other strategy games. Despite his intelligence, he still has an irrational fear of dogs. Breda is usually tasked by Mustang with jobs that require he travel abroad. He is transferred to Western headquarters when Mustang's group is broken up by the homunculi, ch. 61. In the manga, he eventually defects from the military so that he can help Mustang overthrow King Bradley. In the first anime, Tamayuki Shimura voices him in Japanese, and Josh Berry in English, EP.13 EP.13 in Brotherhood, he is voiced by Baichi Sato in Japanese, and Jeremy Inman in English. Topic. Vato Falman Warrant Officer Vato Falman, Vato Faruman Vato Faruman is one of Roy Mustang's most trusted subordinates. His chess code name is The Bishop. He was recruited by Mustang for his innate ability to remember almost every detail, allowing him to act as a sort of recording device that does not leave any physical evidence. Because his intellect is his area of expertise, he does not have much experience in the field, causing him to make rookie mistakes when in a combat situation. He is overly formal, causing some of his comrades to wish he would lighten up. Felman does not play a large role in the first anime, only being another of Mustang's subordinates, ch. 61 Falman is transferred to Northern Headquarters when Mustang's group is broken up by the homunculi. He is subsequently transferred again, this time to Briggs Fortress where he is given what amounts to janitorial duties. 
there, he reunites with the Elric brothers, and helps them and Briggs' forces plan against the homunculi, ch. 23, 65. A running gag with Falman is that his promotion to second lieutenant is continuously forgotten by other characters. In the first anime, he is voiced by Takahira Morozano in Japanese, and by Kyle Hebert in English, EP.5 EP.5 in Brotherhood, he is voiced by Kenji Hamada, EP. 13. Topic. Kane Fury Sergeant Major Kane Fury, Kane Fury, Kane Fury is one of Roy Mustang's most trusted subordinates. His chess code name is The Pawn. He is overly kind in nature, both to people and to animals. He was recruited by Mustang for his technological expertise. As such, he primarily helps Mustang with communications, both in creating secure lines and tapping into others. He is transferred to Southern Headquarters when Mustang's group is broken up by the homunculi. He eventually defects from the military so that he can help Mustang overthrow King Bradley, ch. 61. In the first anime, his Japanese voice actor is Tetsu Shiratori, and his English voice actor is Kevin M. Connolly, EP.13 in Brotherhood. He is voiced by Tetsuya Kakahara, EP. 13. Topic. State military The state military, Amasutorisu Junbu Amasutorisu Gunbu, is a mistress's primary mode of offense and defense. Throughout the history of the country, it has existed to put down uprisings and annex surrounding hostile countries into its borders. It is led by King Bradley, and uses a ranking system common of most real-world militaries, ch. 1. The state military is basically just the puppet force called upon to further the homunculi's plans, ch. 67. Many of the soldiers' names are taken from the makers of fighter aircraft and airplanes, p. 176 Topic Mays Hughes Lieutenant Colonel Mays Hughes Masu Hayuzu Masu Hyuzu is an old friend of Roy Mustang He works in the military's intelligence division but spends much of his time using the military phone lines to brag to Mustang about his family. After his daughter, Alicia, is born, he fawns about how cute and talented she is and bombards others with pictures of her when he sees them. Despite his over-the-top comical tendencies, Hughes is a valuable ally to Mustang's goal of becoming Fuhrer, supplying whatever classified intelligence that may be beneficial. He has also been shown to be a capable fighter, skilled with throwing knives. His general understanding of others' emotions and desire to help them similarly gains the affection of the Elric brothers and their friend Winry Rockbell, as he always offers advice or hospitality to them when they need it. Ch. 14. During one of his attempts to help the Elrics, Hughes learns of the homunculi's control over the country. However, he is shot and killed by Envy, disguised as Hugh's wife, Gracia, ch. 15. This leads Mustang to further investigate the truth for himself, in hopes of finding his friend's killer, ch. 16. His death as described by Arakawa was the moment where 
everyone who read it cried. And so she had to apologize to readers and her assistant for such an event. In the Japanese series he is voiced by Keiji Fujiwara, and in the English dub by Sunny Strait, EP.5 EP.5 In the live-action film adaptation, he is portrayed by Ryuta Sato. Topic. Alex Louis Armstrong Major Alex Louis Armstrong, Erikusu Rui Amusudurangu Erikusu Rui Amusudurangu, the Strong Arm Alchemist, Haowan no Lienjin Shu Shi Gowan no Renkenjutsushi, is a tall, large, and comically emotional state alchemist who will burst into tears or joyous praise, given the right situation, and embraces others in an effort to console them. Because of his extremely muscular build, this usually causes great personal injury to others. Armstrong is very proud of his strength and of his muscular physique, frequently taking off his shirt so that he can flex to show off. As a final element of his comedic properties, he has the tendency to sparkle a trait apparently shared by the rest of his family, when first appearing in a scene or taking off his shirt, pink stars radiate from his body, ch. 4. Despite his humorous tendencies, Armstrong can be very serious when the situation calls for it. He is not fond of violence and will try to end conflicts peacefully, and will break down and cry if an innocent person is killed. Ch. 29 Armstrong comes from a wealthy family of aristocrats who have earned renown in most professions. He has mastered many of his family's talents for himself, and when displaying such a talent, he brags and remarks it to have been passed down the Armstrong line for generations." His alchemical skills also represent a remnant of his family's history. By using a unique kind of cestus, Armstrong can reshape any solid object that he punches. Ch. 7. Armstrong is a valuable ally of Roy Mustang and the Elric brothers, even if they are not always happy to be in his emotional company. He takes his honor as a soldier and as a leader seriously, and always looks out for his peers and subordinates' best interests. Ch. 20 Kenji Utsumi voices him in the Japanese series, and Christopher Sabat in the English adaptation, EP.14 EP. 14. Topic. Olivier Mira Armstrong Major General Olivier Mira Armstrong, Orvui Mira Amusudurangu Orivi Mira Amusudurangu is the older sister of Alex Louis Armstrong. She is charged with leading Briggs Fortress, Barigyuzu Yaosai Barigyuzu Yosei, and protecting the country from the neighboring country of Drachma, Dorakuma Dorakuma. Unlike her brother, who is cheerful and rather emotional, Olivier is stoic and distrusts everyone when she first meets them, she has no patience for formalities or idle conversation. She is also, similarly, a firm believer in survival of the fittest. This has earned Olivier a reputation within the military, and in Drachma, as one who should not be crossed, though her subordinates hold her in high regard. Because she readily joins them in hostile situations and disregards the orders of superiors if she disagrees, her subordinates will answer only to her. Despite her cold attitude, she is heavily implied to care greatly for her subordinates and family, and in rare instances shows some emotion before reverting to her usual personality. 
she always carries a sword at her side, and is proficient enough to be able to defeat her brother in combat. Ch. 65, 83. Her Japanese voice actress is Yoko Somi, EP.33 while her English voice actress is Stephanie Young. Olivier crosses paths with the Elric brothers when they arrive at Briggs Fortress. After Sloth infiltrates Briggs, she is able to convince them to tell her about the homunculi that control the military, ch. 67. To help the Elric brothers combat the corrupt higher-ups, Olivier goes to Central to work her way into King Bradley's inner circle. Once she learns of plans to create an army of immortal super-soldiers, Olivier fights against the homunculi. Although she has no direct control of Briggs, her subordinates still operate it under her wishes, eventually sneaking into Central to help Olivier take control of the government. Ch. 95, 97. Her most loyal soldiers include Miles, Meruzu Meruzu, who is a quarter Ishbalan, remaining in the military with the hope to someday change the country's perception of Ishbal, and Buccaneer, Bacania Bacania, a large, heavy set man who has been shown with two different pieces of automail in the series, ch. 65 Buccaneer fights Bradley together along with the Resistance, but he dies in battle. Ch. 100. Topic: <laughs> Denny Brosh and Maria Ross. Sergeant Denny Brosh, Denny Barashu, Denny Barashu, and Second Lieutenant Maria Ross, Maria Rosu, Maria Rosu, are introduced when they are assigned to protect Edward Elric. Ch. 10. While Brosh is rather nosy and lazy, Ross is serious with her job. Ross is framed by the homunculi for the death of Mays Hughes. Ch. 30 Roy Mustang stages a prison break and then fakes her death, giving her a chance to flee to Shane. Before leaving, she asks that her family and Brosh not be told that she is alive so as to keep the secret from getting out. Ch. 41. To repay Mustang for saving her life, Ross later returns to a mistress and helps him wage an assault on Central. Ch. 89. In the first anime, Brosh and Ross later appear in the rebellion against King Bradley, saving various characters from execution. Brosh is voiced by Masao Harada in the Japanese version of the first series, Yuki Hayashi in the second, and Jim Faranda in the English dubs of both series. EP.18 EP.18 Ross is voiced in Japanese by Mitsuki Saiga in the first series and Kaori Nazuka in the second, and by Meredith McCoy in English. EP.18 EP.18 in the live-action film she is portrayed by Natsuno Watanabe. Sheska Sheska, Sheska Sheska, was a librarian at the first branch of the Central City Library. Because she spent all day reading the many documents stored there, instead of doing her job, she was fired. She has a photographic memory and can remember and reproduce anything she has ever read, with word-for-word -word accuracy. Because of this, after the library burns down, the Elric brothers seek her out to see if she can remember any research papers by Tim Marco. She transcribes the entirety of his research for them, earning enough pay to last her a year for her troubles. 
When Maze Hughes learns of how she helped the Elrics, he hires her to help recreate the criminal records that were destroyed in the fire. Ch. 10. In the first anime, after Hughes' death, Sheska helps Winry Rockbell discover the identity of Sloth. Naomi Wakabayashi voices her in the first anime, and Gwendolyn Lau in the English dub, EP.18 Her voice in the second series is provided by Chika Fujimura, EP. 7. Topic. Chimera A chimera, Heisheung Shou Chimera Chimera, Japanese literally, composite beast, is an alchemical fusion between two or more beings, ch. 1. While the vast majority of chimera seen in Fullmetal Alchemist are a cross between multiple animals, some are humans that have been crossed with an animal. These experiments, performed in secret by the state military to dispose of injured soldiers or those that have taken part in secret missions, endow the human with abilities reminiscent of the animal. Ch. 27. Topic: Greed's Chimeras. A group of chimeras work for the homunculus greed during the series. Beto, Beto, Beto was crossed with a lizard, allowing him to sneak around and climb surfaces with ease. Because of this, he is tasked primarily with intelligence gathering and relies on others to defend him. Ch. 25. He encounters Lin Yao, the new greed, who, having no recollections of Beto, kills him. Ch. 82. In the first anime, he is killed during the military's attempt to capture greed. Dolcetto, Dorichetto, Dorichetto, Dorichet, in the first English anime, was crossed with a dog, giving him an enhanced sense of smell and an unwavering loyalty to greed. Loa, Roa, Roa, La, in the first English anime, and Roa, in the second, was crossed with a bull, giving him greater strength and allowing him to transform into a humanoid bull. He and Dolcetto are killed by the homunculi while trying to defend greed. Martel, Materu Materu, Marta, in the first English anime, was crossed with a snake, and thus can stretch and contort her body to great effect. She uses this ability during her introduction to infiltrate Alphonse Elric's hollow armor body and control it from the inside. Martel is killed during King Bradley's attempt to capture Greed, while inside Alphonse, ch. 30. In the first anime, Martel survives this raid and accompanies Al in his various endeavors. She is ultimately killed by Bradley in much the same way as in the manga, though not before informing Al that Bradley is a homunculus. EP. 40. Topic: <laughs> SOLFJ Kimbla's Chimeras. A total of four chimeras are introduced in the series as Solfj Kimbla's bodyguards. The first pair, the quilled boar chimera Zanpano, Zimpano, in the anime, and the mucus spewing frog chimera Gelso, Jeruso, Jeruso, Jerzo, 
in the anime are tasked with capturing Scar before deciding to defect and side with Alphonse and Scar's group, ch. 72, 73, their fellow chimeras, the simian Darius, Dariusu Dariusu, and the leonoid Heinkel, Heinkeru Heinkeru, aid Edward after Kimbla nearly killed them in apprehending the Fullmetal Alchemist, ch. 77, both pairs aid the Elric in stopping father, with Zanpano and Gelso accompanying Al to Shing to find a cure for their chimera condition while Darius and Heinkel become Yoki's traveling companions. The ending implies that Darius, Heinkel and Yoki joined the circus. Ishbal. The Ishbalans, Ishuvua Ru Ren Ishavaru Jin, Ishvalans, in the second anime, are a religious people, characterized by their brown skin and red eyes. Their god is named Ishbala. Ishvala. In the second anime, the majority of their population were slaughtered by the state military during the Ishvalan civil war. The few survivors live as criminals and refugees in various slums across the country, usually leaping at the opportunity to fight against Amestrians. Ch. 7. With the help of Ishbalan refugees, the corrected transmutation circle was activated by Scar and helped return powers to the alchemists. Ch. 105 Mustang and his team promised Marco to return the Ishbalans their land following the final battle and reverse any anti Ishbalan policies in effect, as well as grant Marco free reign to practice medicine again for the Ishbalans. Scar was also implied to have been granted amnesty afterwards, as a photo shows him living as a warrior priest again. Ch. 108 Similarly, in the first anime, the reformed Amestris give the Ishbalan people their land back after King Bradley's death, e.p. 51. Topic. Shing. Xing, Xin Guo Xin Koku, is a country far away from Amestris. Its people are Asian in appearance, and are split into fifty clans under the rule of a single emperor who fathered a child in each family. In the current storyline, the emperor is in failing health, and his children of which there are 43, seven implied to have been assassinated if not dead of natural causes, whose families are not in good standing with one another, seek to earn his recognition in his final days. Two of his children, Prince Lin Yao and Princess Mei Chong, go to a mistress in separate attempts to find the fabled philosopher's stone and gain immortality, hoping that doing so will convince the emperor to make them his successor. Ch. 32. Those who come from Xing, due to their ability to sense qi, are able to identify a homunculus and sense the presence of numerous souls in one place. Many Xingyi's residents are also skilled in alkahestry, lian dan shu rentenjutsu, purification arts, a technique developed by Hohenheim that functions differently from alchemy. Topic. Fu Fu, Fu Fu, Fu, in the Japanese manga is one of Lin Yao's bodyguards. He is an older man and the grandfather of Lin's other bodyguard, Lan Fan. Though committed to his duties and stern in nature, he cries for his granddaughter after learning that she sacrificed her arm for their prince. 
He leaves his prince's side for an extended period of time when helping Maria Ross escape to Xing, and again when taking Lan Fan to get automail surgery. Ch. 41. Despite this, Fu remains deeply loyal to his prince and is determined to bring back to Xing, Lin and the immortality he has gained. Ch. 63. He is killed by Bradley while trying to protect Lin from the homunculus, ch. 99. He is voiced by Katsunosuke Hori in Japanese and Kenny Green in English, ep. 15. <laughs> Lan Fan Lan Fan, Ranfan Ranfan, Ranfun, in the Japanese manga is one of Lin Yao's bodyguards. She is the granddaughter of Lin's other bodyguard, Fu, and is implied by Lin to be younger than Lin is. She is a skilled fighter despite her age, and can keep up with or defend against seasoned warriors. She is fiercely protective of her prince, and instantly attacks anyone who speaks poorly of him. Ch. 34. This makes for a weakness in battle, by insulting Lin in some way, her opponent can break her usually perfect battle form and leave her open to attack. While protecting Lin, Lan Fan is severely injured by King Bradley, having to amputate her arm in order to escape. After regaining consciousness, she and her grandfather leave Lin so that she can get automail surgery to replace her arm. Ch. 63. The moment her surgery is complete and she has recovered to the point of being able to move though not to the point of having complete control of her new arm, she rushes to Lin's side to start protecting him once again. Ch. 87. Her Japanese voice actress is Nana Mizuki and her English voice actress is Trina Nishimura, EP. 15. Topic. Lin Yao Lin Yao, Rin Yao Rin Yao, Ling Yao, in the first Viz's volumes and the second anime, is the twelfth prince of Xing, and represents the Yao clan. He meets Edward Elric soon after arriving in a mistress, whom he aggravates by being both younger and taller than him. He also tends to leave Edward with pricey dinner bills before quietly slipping away. Despite his laid-back, goofy, and undignified personality, Lin is a skilled swordsman who keeps a cool head in hostile situations. Ch. 33. His major ambition is to replace his father as Xing's new emperor, and as such operates under the belief that power cannot be obtained without the people's support. He is very close to his bodyguards, Lan Fan and Fu, often showing greater concern for their safety than finding immortality and becoming emperor. Ch. 46. Throughout the series, Lin's ongoing search for immortality in a mistress results in numerous encounters with the homunculi, whom he can sense like other Xingyi's characters. He eventually becomes a homunculus himself so as to become immortal, relinquishing his body to greed without any resistance. Ch. 54. However, they eventually come to an agreement to the point where Lin can take control when he feels it is necessary. Ch. 86. During the final battle, Lin becomes a normal human again when Greed transfers himself back into father's body to weaken him. 
Following father's defeat, having gained a philosopher's stone, Lin returns to Xing and, with the experience he and Lan Fan learn from the people of Amestris, becomes the new emperor with the intent of uniting all the nation's segregated clans under his rule. Ch. 108. He is voiced by Mamoru Miyano.15 in the Japanese version and Todd Haberkern in English. Topic. Mei Chong Mei Chong Mei Chan Mei Chan is the 17th princess of Xing who represents the Chong clan. Unlike Lin Yao, she comes to a mistress without any bodyguards due to her clan's poor status, only having her small pet panda, Xiao Mei, Xiao Mei Xiao Mei, Xiao Mei. In the English anime, Chinese for little beauty, that had gotten a disease to keep her from growing, keeping her small, to keep her company. Mei is particularly skilled in alkahestry by using throwing knives, Biao Hio, to create two transmutation circles, one at her intended target and one near herself, allowing her to manipulate matter at a distance. She is somewhat imaginative in nature, having imagined Edward Elric as a tall and handsome young man before actually meeting him and proclaiming that he intentionally misled her. Ch. 32 May later falls in love with Alphonse Elric, also picturing his real form as a handsome man. Ch. 62 Soon after arriving in a mistress on her search for immortality, May teams up with Scar, assisting him on his travels. For a time, she also unknowingly fights the Elric brothers before eventually teaming up with Alphonse, who she developed feelings for, to capture envy and bring the weakened homunculus to Shane, ch. 80. However, her guilt manipulated by envy, May resolves to help her friends in Central City. After father's defeat, relieved upon hearing of her half-brother's intentions as emperor, May returns to Xing alongside Lin and Lan Fan. In the epilogue, May is seen in a family photo together with Alphonse, Edward, Winry, and the couple's son and daughter, ch. 108. Her Japanese voice actress is my go-to and her English voice actress is Monica Rial, E.P. 15. Topic. Other characters Topic Panaco Rockbell Panaco Rockbell Panaco Rokuburu Panaco Rokuburu is the grandmother of Winry Rockbell and also a surgeon and weapon smith living and working in the town of Rizimbul in the eastern region of Amestris. Mixing her two specialties, Panaco is also a prominent automail engineer and presumably the founder of Rockbell Automail, a family-run automail atelier within the town. Panaco also happens to be the neighbor and close family friend of the Elrics, Van Hohenheim, Tricia, Edward and Alphonse. As Winry's only remaining blood relative after the death of her parents, and the closest adult to the Elric brothers after their mother's passing and their father's disappearance, Panaco acts as caretaker to the three youngsters, training Winry in automail engineering and serving as Ed and Al's home base whenever they return to Rizimbul. Ch. 9. Her Japanese voice actresses are Miyoko Aso in the old 
version and Mami Koyama in the young version, EP.17 in the English adaptation. Her voice actresses are Julie Erickson in the old version and Shelley Kayleen Black in the young version, EP.27 EP. 27. Topic: Barry the Chopper. Barry the Chopper, Bari za Chapa Bari za Chapa, is a serial killer who appears to have foresight despite his one-track mind of wanting to chop up more people. Once infamous in Central as a butcher who committed mass murder out of a thrill, his wife being the first of his victims, Barry was captured sometime before the start of the series and reported to have been executed. But in reality, Barry's soul is actually removed from his body and bound to a suit of armor in one of the military's experiments to serve as a guard in the fifth laboratory under the designation number 66. Barry encounters Alphonse when he and Edward infiltrate the lab, psychologically torturing him to get an advantage before escaping when the lab is destroyed. Ch. 12. Barry was later recruited by Roy Mustang and revealed all he knew about the homunculi in return of not being reported since he is considered the only remaining evidence of the fifth laboratory's existence. Barry becomes somewhat loyal to Mustang's group in helping get Maria Ross out of the country. Serving as a means to draw out the homunculi, Barry comes across his original human body after the homunculi have it animated with an animal's soul to track him down. Explaining that returning to his body is pointless at this point as it has begun to decay, Barry instead follows it to the third laboratory to fulfill his dreams of butchering himself. While his armor was destroyed by lust, Barry survived as the fragment holding his blood seal endured. But his body scratched the blood seal and it resulted in Barry's permanent demise, the body completely shutting down due to the symbiotic dependence between it and Barry's soul to coexist. Ch. 39. Arakawa remarks that she enjoys drawing Barry and wanted to expand his character after dismissing her original intent to have him killed off in the fifth laboratory's destruction. In the first anime, Barry encountered the Elric brothers while originally human as he began his murder spree before he was ultimately captured while nearly killing Edward. Barry's story follows the manga up to the fifth laboratory's destruction, becomes a mercenary to help in the slaughter of Ishbal refugees before he is ultimately killed by Scar. EP.24 In the first anime, Kentaro Ito voices him in the Japanese series, and Jerry Jewell in the English adaptation. EP.24 EP.24 Hideyuki Umazu voices Voices him in the second series, EP. 7. Topic: <laughs> Slicer Brothers. Two serial killer brothers who like Barry the Chopper have their souls attached to a suite of armor, called Number 48. They are made to guard the fifth laboratory. Although they are brothers, their souls are bound to the same armor, the older brother to the helmet, the younger brother to the rest of the armor. Like Barry the Chopper, the government pretended to execute them two years earlier. Edward Elric manages to defeat them both. Edward refuses to kill them because they are still human. The one attached to the helmet, how can he still call them human? Before the one attached to the helmet tells Edward who they work for, lust kills him, and the one attached to the rest of the armor is killed by envy.
Slicer brothers are voiced by Shinya Otaki as the older brother and Koichi Sakaguchi as the younger brother in the 2003 anime and Dai Matsumoto and an the older brother and Kenji Najima as the younger brother in the 2009 anime in Japanese and Bill Jenkins as the older brother and Duncan Brannan as the younger brother in the 2003 and 2009 anime in English. Topic: Trisha Elric. Trisha Elric, Torisha Auroraku, Torisha Auroraku, is the deceased mother of Edward and Alphonse Elric. Her husband Van Hohenheim leaves her and their two sons behind to find a way to escape his immortality and achieve this goal. Ch. 68. Trisha tries to last until his return, though she ultimately dies of an illness. Ch. 85. Ed and Al attempt to revive her with human transmutation, but instead create a malformed entity that dies within moments of being created. Ch.23 Hohenheim would later plant the suggestion that the creature was not the actual Trisha, leading to the conclusion it was Alphonse possessing an artificially created body momentarily after losing his own. Ch. 43. 45. In the first anime series, the failed creation becomes the homunculus sloth. EP.42 Her Japanese voice actress is Yoshino Takamori, and her English voice actress is Lydia McKay. EP.2 EP.2 In the live action film adaptation, Trisha is portrayed by Kaoru Harada. Topic: Rose Thomas. Rose Thomas, Rose Tomasu, Rose Tomasu, also spelled Rose, is a young woman introduced at the very start of the series. She is a devout believer in her town's local faith, believing that serving the Church of Leto would bring her dead boyfriend back to life. The Elric brothers' arrival in town opens Rosé's eyes to the church's corruption and forces her to realize her boyfriend cannot be resurrected. Ch. 2. Following the riots in her town caused by the upheaval of the church's authority, she helps to rebuild the town by being the cook for those working the reconstruction, eventually reuniting with Alphonse Elric. Ch. 80. In a monologue to Winry, Rose explains that she and the townsfolk will now actively work for their future rather than passively get by and just wait for a miracle to happen, a lesson she credits to the Elrics. In the first anime, she instead becomes the mute, Holy Mother of the townspeople, giving them a symbol of guidance as they rise up against the state military. Rosé loses her voice after being captured by a soldier of the military, it is strongly implied that it was caused by a traumatic experience from being raped by the soldiers or at least one of the guerrillas, as she now has a baby. EP.41 Rosé later regained her ability to speak prior to being captured by Dante, who intended to use her as a new vessel once obtaining the philosophy philosopher's stone. But Rosé is freed by Edward as she escapes with her baby. Her voice actress in Japanese is Hoko Kawashima in the first series, and Satsuki Yukino in the second. EP.3 Colleen Klinkenberg voices her in the English series, EP. 1. Topic. Truth Truth is a mysterious being that lives on another plane of existence. 
truth shows itself to all who try human transmutation, or try to open the gate of truth. It is unknown what gender truth is. When it meets people, truth tells everyone that truth is what people call God, the universe, the world, all and one. When people cross the gate of truth they must pay a toll, for Edward Elric, his right arm and left leg for Alphonse his entire body, Izumi Curtis her ability to have children, and when father uses Roy Mustang to open the gate, truth takes away his sight. When father is defeated, truth mocks him for trying to become something greater than himself saying human faults are what make them strong and father never believed in himself and used others to do the work for him. As punishment father is forced to rejoin the gate of truth, this is an even exchange for the fact that father boasted that truth was the arbiter of order and keeps men in their place. When Edward gives up his alchemy to get Alphonse's body and soul back, Truth congratulates him saying Edward finally understood, that even without alchemy he still has his friends. Thus, Truth takes Edward's alchemy and gives Alphonse his body and soul back. Truth is voiced by Lucy Christian, Maxie Whitehead and Vic Mignogna in the English language for Fullmetal Alchemist, Brotherhood. Anime-only characters Dante Dante, Dante is an anime-only character and the central antagonist of the first anime adaptation. She is the former lover of Hohenheim, and has used Philosopher's Stones to transfer her soul to new bodies for around 400 years. She leads the homunculi, either creating them herself, or finding them after they are created, and uses them to create conflicts in the hope of having a desperate alchemist create a new stone for her. She first appears as an elderly woman, who is the former alchemy teacher of Izumi Curtis. She fakes her death at the hands of greed, and later reveals herself to have transferred her soul to the body of her student Lyra, Ryra Ryra, a young girl who had wished to become a state alchemist, EP.45 EP.32 She is eventually killed by gluttony, whom she reduced to a feral state, to further her own purposes, EP.51 She is voiced by Kazuko Su Sugiyama in the Japanese series, and by Cindy Mayfield in the English series. As Lyra, she is voiced by Yumi Kakazu in the Japanese series, EP.22 and by Monica Rial in the English series, EP.22. <laughs> Russell and Fletcher Tringham Russell Tringham, Rasaru Toringamu Rasaru Toringamu, and his younger brother Fletcher, Ferecha Toringamu Ferecha Toringamu, are the sons of the famed alchemist Nash Tringham. Their characters are adapted by the first anime from the light novel The Land of Sand, not the manga. They seek to complete their father's research with a substance known as red water. Kaiishuea Kai Mizu, a toxic liquid with alchemical properties. To help them in this endeavor, they impersonate the Elric brothers to gain access to resources and locations reserved for state alchemists. 
while Fletcher is reluctant to do this, Russell insists that nobody will mind. EP.12 They are almost executed towards the end of the first anime when they are mistaken for the real Elric brothers, who are wanted for treason, and, after being saved, they try to help Ed find out about the homunculi. Although Edward and Russell fight near constantly, Fletcher and Alphonse are able to get along. The two Tringham brothers tend to utilize alchemy involving plants. EP.49 Russell is voiced by Kosuke Okano in the Japanese series, and Justin Cook in the English adaptation. Fletcher is voiced by Monaco Arakawa in Japanese, EP.12 and by Avery Williams in the English adaptation, EP.12. Frank Archer Frank Archer Furunkua Cha Furunku Aka is a character exclusive to the first anime, introduced as Maze Hughes replacement. He is cool, calm, and collected, with a love for violence and war. He dreams of becoming a hero on the battlefield, viewing it as a way to rise up the ranks of the military. To this end, he does whatever is necessary to please his superiors, and always ensures that his actions earn him some publicity. EP.28 As the series progresses, Archer develops an interest in the military's various projects, such as the homunculi, chimeras, and the philosopher's stone. Archer loses the left half of his body when the Philosopher's Stone is created in Lior, and receives automail modification in order to regain his mobility. After the operations left him mentally unstable, Archer rages through Central, carrying out King Bradley's ordered executions. Riza Hawkeye shoots Archer down while he tries to kill Roy Mustang. EP.51 He is voiced by Sho Hayami in the Japanese series, EP.28 and by Troy Baker in the English dub, EP.28. Topic. Isaac McDougall Isaac McDougall is a character exclusive to Fullmetal Alchemist, Brotherhood, better known as the Ice Alchemist. He is a former member of the Amestrian State Military. He deserted the army after the Ishval Civil War. He has been working with the anti-establishment ever since, using a Philosopher's Stone he plans to destroy Central Command and King Bradley, who he knows to be a war criminal. However, the El Alex Louis Armstrong and Roy Mustang manage to defeat him, however he manages to escape, because the human body is 60% water, McDougall can make weapons out of his body, whilst escaping down a dark alleyway, King Bradley is waiting for him, seeing his chance McDougall tires to kill him, however with his superhuman speed Bradley kills him instead. After his death, Edward eventually realizes that McDougall, like Hughes, was aware of father's plans to consume a mistress, and briefly regrets not listening to him. Isaac McDougall is voiced by Koichi Yamadera in Japanese and Brian Massey in English. Topic. Merchandise. Action figures, busts, and statues from the Fullmetal Alchemist manga and anime have been created by leading toy companies, primarily Metacom and Southern Island. Metacom has created high-end deluxe vinyl figures of the characters from the anime. Other merchandise includes plushes, key chains, straps and pins.
Apparels from the characters include the state alchemists' watches, necklaces and earrings. Characters are also featured in a trading card game that was first published in 2005 by Joyride Entertainment. Video games from the series also feature the characters, although in most of them the Elric brothers are the only playable characters. Topic. Reception Several publications for anime, manga, and other media have provided praise and criticism to the characters from the series. Though the initial volumes were felt to be formulaic, Melissa Harper from Anime News Network noted that the series and characters grows in complexity as it progresses. She praised Arakawa for making all the characters' designs unique and distinguishable, despite many of them wearing the same basic uniforms. Additionally, she liked the comedy of the characters, remarking that, Ed's facial expressions are probably the humorous highlight of the series. Lori Lancaster from Mania Entertainment praised the designs from the anime as well as the facial expressions from the characters. He also added that their interactions are very entertaining, praising the way how Edward deals with his opponents and his friends, giving the anime a good balance between action and comedy. Hilary Goldstein from IGN noted that the characterization of the protagonist Edward balances between being a typical clever kid and a stubborn kid, successfully allowing him to float between the series' more comical moments and its underlying drama without seeming false. Samuel R. Bogost from THEM. Anime Reviews comments that the interaction between the Elric brothers as they travel is interesting, since humor is quite frequent rather than the constant grimness of many series. He also praises the fact that all the characters have distinct designs, even though some of them had the same uniforms. Anime Boredom praised the characters for having a good balance between action, comedy and deep moments and remarked the emotional core of the development of the two main characters. Maria Lin from AnimeFringe.com criticized the large number of sentimental scenes in the series, considering them an abuse to make the viewers cry. She also mentioned that the characters had lack of development, such as Edward having the same beliefs during all the anime as he once again tried to revive people using alchemy. However, she noted the anime has some of the freshest and most vibrant character designs since Naruto.